I have become the place I grew into and out of. What arises for all things, I have become. I have climbed my branches out of myself. I was diagnosed with deafness, progressive deafness, when I was 32 years old. And I had my whole normal life all planned out. <laughs> and I was a writer already. Losing my hearing and becoming aware I was losing my hearing, because you don't know you're losing your hearing. And that's the great trick of listening. You don't know you're not listening. You think you're listening. You hear words. And when I got fitted for hearing aids, I had to relearn speech. The language that I had been hearing had slowly evolved into another language, and I couldn't understand my own mother. There's a great metaphor right there for why story is important. We have forgotten how to listen. My deafness is medical. It's nothing compared to what we have culturally going on. Being a queer writer, being a queer, influences my whole worldview. And I am really proud to have had books and poems published in specifically queer publications. I, um, I want to be visible in that way. And I think in the biology world, you know, traditionally, it has been a pretty straight, white, male world. That's changing quite a bit, um, especially the gender part. Sexuality, I don't know. It's a little bit messy. But when I wrote and published my first book, it took a long time to find the right press because I wanted both poems that talked about my personal life and about um, the natural world. And... Typically, those things were kept apart in poetry. There's the nature poems and the confessional poems. And I didn't, I didn't believe in that separation. I was interested in how the confessional poems about identity influenced the way I saw the natural world and the science of the natural world, speaking through a queer lens. And from this place that I occupy in the world uh, is the only place I can speak from. And I don't want to mask that. In fact, the opposite. When I started writing and then writing kind of took on, took me on and I realized I was taking on something that was much larger than me and I didn't know where it was going to go. And I, I took it on because it came to me to be done. I said, okay, what what do I want with it or why am I doing this? And it's that it's important that native peoples, indigenous peoples are seen as human beings. So that there's not just one story allowed or one particular kind of tribal story allowed or you know, one person allowed to tell this story, because there are multiple stories, then some stories are given more authority than other stories because of the hierarchy and the system involved in those who, uh, who engender power or, or think they have the power to say who belongs or whose story is given that kind of space. So that means there's several different kinds of stories within a family. There's many different kinds of stories. I think everybody deserves a place at the table. I'm concerned about race and how race is constructed and how power plays into that. And so that that's sort of, I guess, a thumbnail of my work. I think about the way we, took, we refer to the, the civil rights movement as the struggle and, um, and it feels like sort of the singular moment when we talk about it and, and MLK and, and then you know, there's progress. And, and I think there is, that progress is possible, but I feel like the struggle is 
the thing and it has it, i think it has to be constant we all have to be mindful and engaged we can't just be like oh we've made progress done like no no and at some point like oh we, we feel like we can you know, spike the football and call it a touchdown and, and that that wasn't the civil rights movement i mean that was an important thing but we have we still have issues we have to deal with and that's what we have to do. In the beginning, places to start. Our mother's heart, first sound to prove our ears, tells us we're not one. From beat one, there's no end to the spreading differences we apprehend. It's important to tell the story, like the act of telling, I think, does something for the teller, but also the telling does something for the record. And that's important because the record is what we have. That's the narrative we're creating for the future. Um, that is the way in which history works. Let me tell you about the romantics. They saw the industrialization coming. They wrote poetry against it. They stood against it. They published against it and they got silenced because people loved them and were listening to them. The way to silence somebody is to devalue what they say, minimize the meaning. And that's the world that we're left with right now, a world where the value of our emotions, the value of our perceptions, our subjective individual view on things, our individual stories, the many, many, many narratives that make up a community and a society, they are devalued in favor of one voice that is destroying everything. To pray, you open your whole self to sky, to earth, to sun, to moon, to one whole voice that is you, and know that there is more that you can't see, can't hear. We see you, see ourselves, and know that we must take the utmost care and kindness in all things. Breathe in, knowing we are made of all this, like eagle rounding out the morning inside us. We pray that it will be done in beauty, in beauty. Everybody wants to be heard. I think writing poetry gets you, or any kind of creative act gets you into that space where you can, those kinds of thoughts that have no nourishment fall away. And there you are with the thoughts that come from the earth, the thoughts that come from the ancestors who love you. When I write, I'm taken with understanding or moving towards understanding or being in a way that I have not been before. But it's that process in which you know, I'm transformed into seeing or knowing in a different kind of way. I think that's what we want from art is a kind of engagement so that, um, you know, what is possible or inspire you, there's inspiration or something possible. It opens up new doorways and there's, you know, new connections or new openings. That's when there will be the kind of healing that needs to happen when all of the stories are out in the open and listened to and heard and acted on at the kitchen table. <laughs> Poetry and storytelling have been sequestered into a peculiar little corner away from the whole story of climate change and sustainability and resilience. Poetry and storytelling are as vital to our resilience and our sustainability in the face of climate change as the solar panels on my roof. Being able to listen to each other, being able to reach across cultures and understand each other, that's not done by numbers. As resources become more scarce, as space becomes more scarce, we really have to love each other. We have to not be afraid 
of someone who is different. We have to dissolve otherness. Numbers don't do that. Only art does that. Only stories do that. I think we're at a thrilling time for contemporary poetry and, and the multiplicity of voices. And not just the ecological connections, but the social connections, the stories we have, um, our own histories, our own cultures, uh, our race, our gender, our sexuality, that is all part of the way that we engage with the natural world. I think that um, the growing conversation around eco-justice, uh, around both poetics and politics, that are not just looking at um, saving the environment, but how does human health, um, how do biases, how does institutional racism all play into ecologically, ecological health um, or ill health? I think that's a really good place that we're in right now. And, and I think that for environmental justice, it has to be social justice as well. Our day, our lives incomplete without a mammal, the gaze of something unafraid that we're afraid of meeting ours before it runs off. Linnaeus was called indecent when he named them. Plenty of other commonalities, hair, live young, a proclivity to plot, but no, mammal, mammal, breasted and nippled and warm, warm, warm. When we dwell in story, we dwell at the heart of humanity and we'll fight for it because it's our heart. <laughs>